Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call to order the VCDP planning grant closeout, which is stipulated in the in the grant uh, mandates that we have for this uh, feasibility study planning grant. And I'd like to hand uh, tonight's proceedings over to Isaac. Good evening, everybody. I'm Isaac. Um, I'm going to provide some detail here, uh, what we did with the planning grant and planning grants in general. And then if anybody has any questions, um, I can open it up um, at that point. Um, uh, these planning grants are distributed by um, Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, they are, originate at the Department of HUD. And as such, they have a series of rules associated with them. And, and one of those rules is public hearings and public participation. We had an initial hearing on this in what, March of April of 2019, it was a while ago. Um, and then um, this is the final public hearing. So you typically have a hearing at application and a hearing at closeout. Um, we were awarded the funding and then uh, during our feasibility um, study, we actually asked for a little bit more money uh, through the grant. We got an amendment to get some more money. Um, and what that money allowed us to do is take a really close look at the library and understand um, some of the problems, <laughs> some of the problems we were encountering with expanding at that location. Um, so we uh, completed um, a bunch of different work with the planning funds um, to try to narrow it down. Now this, um, this culminated in a, sort of a final report. Uh, we, we generated that in May, but the final report really goes through December, uh, through our activities through December of 2020. Um, so like, like, well, like a year ago. So, um, um, so some of the final, some of the final report that we've made public um, is, is, has become obsolete or we've developed more information since then. Um, but by the end of uh, 2020, uh, just, I'll just rattle off a few things that uh, we did with the money. Um, we hired a historic consultant to ensure that the plans we were doing, um, the plans we made uh, wouldn't, um, harm the historic resource, which is the library, which is obviously really old and, and really valuable. Um, uh, we created a set of preliminary floor plans and we did some work with the library board to understand the space needs. Um, we did a narrative scope of work for the work we wanted to do there. Uh, we did um, a, a preliminary um, look at what permits would be necessary for the job going forward. Um, we also were required to do what's called a archaeological resource assessment. Peter, if you're taking notes, by the way, yeah. I'm reading off the table of contents, the table of appendices in the, uh, in the, in the report itself. So I'm just rattling those off one by one. Great. Um, be helpful for later. Thank you, Isaac. Yeah. Um, we also did a, what's called an archaeological resource because it's near a stream and it's near the Broad Brook. Uh, it's in a valley. Um, um, the feds uh, felt that um, it was archaeologically sensitive. So we did two levels of archaeological report there. And we, and we actually went out to the site, and dug up uh, and a bunch of test pits to try to find uh, artifacts, uh, which we didn't, as it turns out, which um, is, is bad news if you're a historian or, or archaeologist. It's good news if you're trying to build something that you don't have uh, artifacts. <laughs> um, we developed a preliminary cost estimate budget and a preliminary project schedule. So those are the things we did with the money. Um, and, um, you know, I'm happy to discuss findings in greater detail, or, or, or maybe I'll just start right now with opening it up to questions before I go too much farther. I have no questions, Isaac, because uh, I'm, on the, <laughs> I'm on the library edition uh, committee for the library. Uh, I, I would say I don't have any questions, but I would say that I think that this has been going on uh, quite smoothly. And uh, the work that's been done 
so far as they're top notch, as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And I think that you've done a good job of keeping it together. Uh, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. It's, 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 <laughs> No, for being a little project, when you once you start using, once you start utilizing federal money uh, or federally de derived money, uh, they get extraordinarily com extraordinarily complicated uh, unnecessarily because I mean it's such a small project. But um, so so again, the the report we did characterized the period right up until December 2020. Since that time, um, we've done a bunch of additional work. Um, one of our goals when we did the feasibility study last year was to try to figure out, <sighs> try to figure out if we could do this without putting a full elevator in the building. Cause it seemed quite frankly, a little ridiculous to us to have to put a full elevator in a relatively small building. We've subsequently learned that we really can't avoid it. Um, as a municipality, um, we can't, and, and in fact, we don't really want to avoid it. We want to have full accessibility with an elevator. The, the site grades, we did, we did some further work on the site grades. They make it very difficult to have a graded entrance on both levels of the building. So, well, impossible. So we need a mechanical conveyance in place. Um, so that's sort of the, some of the new information we've developed since the, um, since this uh, study was, was written up. Um, and that leads us into the second part of this public hearing, uh, which is in order to find money for that elevator and for other items we've identified in the cost estimates, uh, we're working uh, at submitting an application to USDA Rural Development. Um, they have some very low cost, uh, low interest rate, long-term um, lending options. Um, the application, which is due on Friday, um, is not a commitment on the town by the by the town of Guilford, uh, but there is a deadline for it for this calendar year. So we wanted to get the application in and get USDA considering our project. Um, and so we didn't, because because again, next year's deadline is next December. So we figured uh, we have all the information necessary. Let's just let's just throw it in. So um, we've been working on uh, pulling that application together this week. So I know I'm jumping around. I just jumped from two federal departments, uh, and we should <laughs> Department of HUD over to USDA, but, uh, but that's kind of how these things go. Isaac, we should say that uh, if the loan is granted, uh, then the town would vote on whether to accept it or not. Uh, is that correct? It has to go through the bond vote. It has to go through a bond vote. So exactly. We would have then, uh, and I think that's a good mechanism because it would require the whole town or who was ever voting uh, to approve or disapprove this project, basically. Yeah, um, that's exactly correct. Um, um, but again, um, we, we have to, unlike, you know, a conventional lender, we actually have to apply to get a, to get a sort of a proposal out of, to get a, a rate and term acceptance out of them we have to go through this application process so um, um we're going to do that and see what they say and um if um if they agree to it the interest rate's quite a bit lower than what we'll find um, um what we'll find in the in the open market in particular in a time where we're starting to see interest rates creep up so um well, we're going to stay hopeful for that and uh, we should also mention that there is a whole uh, uses and sources budget uh, that shows where other income would come to have this to achieve this project to completion. Yeah, um, uh, where other financing would come from. Yes, um, I mean I can go through that, Richard. If you want me to go oh, through that, to, to have that on record that there's. Yeah, I mean we we went from having a first draft of. What are our cost estimates? What are our potential sources? To having a second and third, and now I think I'm on the fourth or fifth draft of that. And um, but basically, it's a um, it's a combination, approximately a third, a third, a third. Uh, at this point, a third money that 
Guilford's already set aside for this project, a third borrowing and a third in grants and fundraising um, uh, to support the project. That's a, that's a pretty good ratio I find uh, for projects like this, if we could, if we could stay that way. Um, and so, but within each of those thirds, there's, you know, a, a bigger conversation, you know, right? <laughs> so. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, uh, I do. I don't, uh, I, I just don't know what the overall, uh, so when a third, a third, a third, what's, what is a third uh, dollar wise? Yeah, so I, that I can, let me, um, let me just pull something up on my other screen here. Um, the, where it stands now, we've, like I said, the elevator is expensive. Uh, where it stands now, we're looking at um, just over $800,000 in construction costs for, um, um, for the build, for the addition to the building, um, and um, just over two hundred thousand dollars in what, what I characterize as soft costs to design uh, engineering. Now, of that two hundred thousand, a lot of uh, a, a certain amount of that has already been paid for through this particular grant. Um, so, um, um, so anyway, that, so we're looking at basically a million dollar project. Uh, that's that's the latest data we have, um, and um, you know I don't know if Zon, have you seen any of? Has anybody seen any of the pictures? Um, Peter, if you're able, are you able to give me some control? I could just put something up on the screen. Just give me a hot second here. Yeah. There you go. You should be able to share your screen. Um, I'm just going to put up. This is a, a more recent drawing uh, that, that the um, the committee has looked at already and reviewed. Um, and um, I'll, I'll try to. If we, if you see, this is obviously the perspective as if you were standing in the middle of uh, Guilford Center Road, uh, looking towards the front. And in the back, that's pretty much the only place that, <laughs> that we could put in addition. Um, in the building, and there's a there's a whole bunch of reasons why that's the case, um, but it's a it's a really complicated site um, to, to to put an addition on. Um, but at the end of the day, it actually works pretty well uh, having it in that place. It kind of um, architecturally mimics the idea of having a barn behind a house. Um, this is oh, I'm sorry. This is what it would look like down here. You can zoom in on if you were if you're standing somewhere on Carpenter Hill Road. Let me get in closer. Um, you can you can kind of make out there's a little courtyard here, um, and there's an entrance way, and then the upstairs of this will be basically a library, um, as any library would. It's going to have stacks and seating, and and there's going to be a little office space for Kathy. Uh, there's an elevator in here and there's a stairwell and this bathroom. Um, and then the downstairs area down here um, is going to be what we're characterizing as the children's activity room, which is a big part of what the library does. But one of the challenges currently with the library is it's an incompatible use having adults in there trying to quietly read and having a bunch of kids in there doing a program. So the kids have increasingly been pushed outside. I noticed they had a tent set up there all summer where a lot of the programs were run outside. Uh, whereas this sort of separates the building into two uh, distinct uses, uh, the, an activity room or basically a community space in the, in the first level, and then the actual traditional library uh, staying on the upper level. So that's a real nutshell. I mean, we've had <laughs> at this point uh, years of meetings about this, so we could really dive. I could really dive into some detail with you here. Does anybody have any questions with the nutshell approach? Well, so the original library building. What is the vision for the use of the original library building? Nothing. 
um, it's going to, the vision is it's going to stay exactly the way it is, uh, with the exception that they may reconfigure, you know, how the stacks land. Uh, I'm pointing to this lower picture. This, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, it was, it's, it's not common that you have the original library in a town that was originally built as a library and has been used consistently throughout its history as a library. So partly due to that and partly due to the fact it's been so well taken care of, it's a, it's a, it's a really valuable historic asset. And uh, I mean, it's a historic building. And, uh, and as such, if we're gonna use federal money to do anything here, we can't really disturb the, um, the historic nature of the building. So what we're proposing, the construction project we're proposing to do here largely is in the addition. Uh, we will be doing some mechanical work in the basement of the original building, but we're trying to leave everything pretty much the same uh, as you see it today inside the building. To also to partially answer her question, um, the, the space that is the current story time area and the space that uh, um, where the public access computers are would become more of a, a adult uh, use space for, for, for adult reading materials. Because, yeah. Because that would be moving into the new edition. Yeah, so I'll, um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. Um, um, this is the this is the entrance right here as you come in off Guilford Center Road, the main front door. And this is the composition of the library. Now, one thing we did put on this particular plan is a couple of little breakout rooms. So we have a little wall that, that we put in here, but that's not to say we have to do that. That was just an idea on this particular drawing. Um, but these two rooms pretty much stay the same. And then you enter um, into the back here um, into this whole other um, collections reading room back here, and this is the um, this is the librarian's sort of work area office in this sort of this nook, I guess you could call it, this corner. And then there's an upstairs. That is the upstairs. Well, well so 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 there, there's some confusing terms. This is. This is what we're gonna call the first story, what we should call the first story. Um, the, we're not adding an upstairs, we're actually using a basement. So, we'll, so what we're gonna end up doing is calling it the ground level and the first level. So this is the first level. Um, and then I'll go back up, this is the ground level. So this here is the basement of the existing library. And then attached to that is the children's activity room, you know, the bottom stop of the elevator, a little kitchenette, a bathroom, and then this little courtyard space out here uh, where you can enter and exit this space. And the, the nice thing about the children's activity room is it can be used sort of, as I mentioned before, a little bit separate from the rest of the library. So in other words, we could actually have the library closed and, but allow people to use the children's activity room after hours, because they'll be uh, somewhat separated. Anybody else have any questions? I, I'm not I doing this as well as an architect would. Um, I do. Yeah, I, I, and just stop me if this is not the place for. But just at what point can we start getting some of these uh, images in front of the public's eye, just to start? Well, there's a rescheduled a public meeting for next month. And is that the soonest? I mean, yes. That you'd so, want uh, yeah, so Michael actually had a conversation with the architects about that today. Um, um, what I, He's going to send me, he's going to do a Revit, or, or a Revit. He's going to do some 3D elevations for me and send them to me which I'm going to in turn send to you guys and see if that, I know you had mentioned that Michael on our yeah. meeting a few weeks ago, um, see if that was what you had envisioned as um, something that we could distribute to the public. Um, so I have him, I have the architect pretty busy right now trying to, 
<laughs> trying to get me all the stuff I need from him by Friday for this RD application. But as soon as I get what I need out of him, um, he's promised to send me some um, 3D drawings. So, um, so I'll get those out to you as soon as I get them. And, and um, there's, a, there's an addition public meeting. We should mention this tonight and put it in the notes for February 2nd. Yep. And so there's a there's a public meeting scheduled for February 2nd, and that leads us back to, I think the committee needs to meet with the architects at least once before that. Yeah. Um, I have a question looking at it. Is the parking still going to be very limited in the area there, or has there been more? Yeah, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I'm going to go back out and I'll show you another drawing. I'm going to stop sharing it now, but then let me find this other drawing. Um, it is going to be limited. We, there's no room for additional parking. Um, this is a pretty, the drawing I'm going to put up now is a little busy. Um, so be patient with me. Um, it's probably not the best drawing, but it's the one I have on hand at the moment. So the parking right now is perpendicular along, um, uh, perpendicular uh, along Carpenter Hill Road. And so we're going to maintain that regime, if you will. So right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight spaces, uh, one of which is a handicap. So it's almost like two spaces. Um, they're gonna, it's gonna be obviously formalized um, and it's gonna be accessible. Uh, so with the grade we have there, uh, getting an accessible space on is a little bit of a uh, slope challenge, but I think we've solved it in this particular drawing. Uh, so the uh, accessible spaces will be down near the, the bottom of the uh, parking there. In addition, we have one accessible space out front that we're not going to touch. And there's commonly two or three people that, par that will... Um, Parallel Park along Guilford Center Road out in front of the library. That's about all the space they have out there. So did that answer your question? You're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd love to do more parking. We Two of our challenges were on this project were uh, you, this new building, if I was to like so pick this up and move this so it was sort of in the line of the existing library, the grades don't really allow us to, to do that because we can't get a, it's too, it would be too steep of an entry. You'd have to like, you'd have, to, you can't get it that close basically to that, to Carpenter Hill Road and be able to get access into the building, either on the first level or the ground level. So you have to move it back. The other challenge we have is this well right here. Uh, the idea of discontinuing and punching a new well in um, is fraught with risks and we, we have a perfectly good working well and one that we now know is very clean. <laughs> um, and um, so we didn't want to interrupt that. We didn't want to have to put a new well in, find space for a new well. So, um, so those th two things. And then the third thing is the people at the Division for Historic Preservation uh, up in Montpelier have said that is not a way to treat a historic building. Like you don't want to put an addition to it and make it look like a longer building. You want to differentiate the term they use is you want to differentiate from your new building from your old building and make it look like a separate entity, but you don't want to differentiate too much. You want it to be stylistically uh, adhering or similar, but you want it to be different. Uh, so they shot down the idea very early on of making one, making the building longer. They were not happy with that idea at all. So that's, again, that's a nutshell of, of why we landed where we've landed in terms of this design. I'm gonna stop sharing this here. Does anybody else have questions? Um. I do. Um, I, being um, a, a, an artist, I'm curious to know if there are um, uh, the, the the Vermont Arts Council, for instance, has a program for uh, uh, upgrade or for facility upgrades. 
that might be able to be of use in this in this at some level in this certainly not for the new construction but there might be some aspects that might be uh, possible and then also the possibility of including art um uh, some sort of art piece or something or some art competition or something related to the outside uh of the building um just uh, just a thought i don't know where that falls i don't know how that lays into the picture but here's an opportunity i think yeah so two two um responses to that number one the vermont arts council cultural facilities grant is on our short list for construction they'll actually fund that okay. um there's there's other grant opportunities they have that the library would qualify for under any circumstance for programmatic uh, activities um the what i call the vac vermont arts vac cultural facilities grant comes from the same state appropriation as several other grants and uh so we can only qualify for one next year uh, so we're trying to decide whether we go for the historic preservation or whether we go for the cultural facilities, but we're going to put an application for at least one of those um, next year. And um, you now you can get up to 20,000 for the purposes of budget up to 25,000, I think for either uh, for the purposes of budgeting, I think we budgeted, we can get 20 and, uh, and that'll be helpful if we can. Um, with regard to the treatment of the exterior and the siding, that's that would be really difficult to do as a as a competition because it is it's such a negotiation between we, we we've hired a, a very reputable architecture firm partly because they have experience negotiating with the division for historic preservation about how you do the siding treatment um, so you know we'll have some choices um, you know, what is the exact reveal on the clabber, for instance, or what is the paint color we're going to be? Uh, th but they're pretty, they're pretty bland vanilla choices. I, uh, I think our, our better bet, if you want to make something really public, is to, you know, decide on some things that we want for wall hangings or for wall treatments on the inside of the building in the future rather than the outside. Yeah. Uh, I just know there are some very uh, there are some very strong programs. Uh, they're not you know they're not uh, incredibly uh, there's not a lot of money available, but there is uh, in place making opportunities, and so this is just a, an opportunity for that. So yeah. yeah. Well, this um, let's see if I can do this without. So don't uh, don't look the, don't look too hard. I'm I'm going to confuse your eyes here. Uh, this uh, I don't have. I don't think I have a um, picture. But this this room up here, the adult um, reading room, effectively, we had at one point. I think we had a. Didn't, didn't we have a drawing of what it looked like from the inside? It's going to be a spectacular room. There's not a lot of wall space between stacks and windows, but there's some. Uh, so there's definitely opportunities to soften this room on the inside with, with you know, some sort of art. Uh, the, the room itself is going to be spectacular to sit in. You're going to be able to see the meeting house right next door. You're going to be able to look out over the, the meadows up uh, um, up Carpenter Hill Road, um, you'll be able to look out over towards uh, what is the little park that we built down there on yeah. Carpenter Hill Road now. So um, yeah, so it's going to be a spectacular place, and and I think it would be a great opportunity to incorporate some art in there. Any other questions, or can we uh, move along? Did you get all that, Peter? Pretty much. Okay. Oh, Anything from this, I'll get on the video uh, when BTTV is done. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Isaac. Thank you for having me today, and um, thank you for the support on the project. And motion to adjourn. Yes, I would, uh, with the select board, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn this uh, uh, grant review, planning grant close up, veranda motions for adjournment. Do I have a second? Okay. Right. Uh, Rusty second. And is there any further discussion? Okay, Rusty? Aye. Zahn? Aye. 
Miranda? Aye. Michael? Aye. Richard? Aye. The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. So we'll see you at 6.30. Thank you, Isaac. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. See you later.